Uh, but welcome everybody to Showcase. Uh, this is actually a follow-up series. Uh, we did a live event um, that actually was um, was sold out. We had a standing room only. And a lot of people were coming up to us after the fact, and they were saying, hey, we wish you would have had this online because there was people obviously from other places of the country that couldn't make it out to this conversation. So this specific conversation in this series, right? And if you're wondering about the previous conversations, you guys can find them on the Think Bigger Mastermind group, which uh, Terry will drop in the chat here shortly. That's where you guys can find the previous recordings for the previous trainings. Today, we're going to be talking about ICON, how to hit ICON, what that means. And for those of you that don't know, ICON means two things. You got a cap with our company, which is going to be about $3 million in production, right? And if you're in Orange County, that means you do a deal or two or three and then you cap. Or, you know, if you're going to have an average price, sales price of, you know, 500000 that's going to be about six transactions. So number one, you're going to cap. And number two, you're going to do 20 additional transactions. When you do those two things, EXP will then gift you $16,000 in stock. The individuals that are going to be speaking today, they've all accomplished this. Um, Christian, Will, Liliana, all of them have hit ICON. Um, Lily's on her way to do ICON number two. I'm pretty sure Christian is as well. And our host uh, for today's call is Mr. Joseph Trujillo. And uh, he's actually on the way to hit ICON five times, right? He's ICON four times. So he's on the way to hit icon five times. So you guys are going to be getting a ton of value. They're going to be sharing about how they've been able to do what they've been able to do. Uh, but without further ado, Mr. Joseph Trujillo, let's take, take us away in this conversation, brother. Thank you so much. Hey, brother. I appreciate the introduction. Thank you so much um, for all of you that are on this call. Again, let's set some context to it. You know, we're all here to gain some insight, listen to the experiences of these uh, incredible icon agents, share their perspectives because they're doing this at a very high level. And so your takeaways from this is going to enable you to be able to elevate your performance, um, everything that you're doing in sales, and have you set the stage so that way you can be icons, right? So it's going to be a phenomenal conversation. Let me introduce you to the panelists. And panelists, um, after the introduction, I'd love if you could take one minute, um, two minutes max, tell us a little bit about uh, what area that you focus in, how long you've been with eXp, how many times you hit icon and uh, tell us a, a little bit about your background in, in real estate. So let's first lead off. Um, our panelists for today are Liliana Matos, uh, Christian Fernandez, and Will Higgins. Big round of applause for these guys. Shout out, shout out. Liliana, lead us off, my friend. Tell us a little bit about you and your business really quick. Yeah. Hey, everyone. So my name is Liliana Matos. I work out of the LA area currently. Um, born and raised in New Jersey. So I've been here for about six years in real estate for about five. Uh, been with EXP for about three years now. And um, yeah, and I'm a team leader here. I have my own office um, in Sherman Oaks. And I just love EXP. Love it. Love it. Thank you for that. Christian, brother, talk to us. Uh, let's see. I've been in the business for about 14 years. I am uh, based out of Orange, California, so Orange County. Uh, this is almost two years with EXP. Uh, I'm also a team leader like we got here in Orange County. We are up to 44 agents at this time. Um, let's see what else. I flipped over about 100 homes. Um, still do a little bit of flipping. and. That's about it. That's a lot. That's a lot. Thank you, my brother. Appreciate you. Mr. Will Higgins. What's up, guys? So again, Will Higgins, I've been in the business just uh, just at five years. Um, I think three, three full time, three and a half full time. I was a, a former, had another career before real estate. So I worked at the railroad for 12 years, got into real estate, uh, you know, like five years ago, joined EXP two years ago, and um, it has changed changed my life. So um, I am a solo agent here, and I, I'm in Chino Hills, California, and um, I mainly service San Bernardino County and uh, do a couple of deals in LA every now and then. All right, all right. So we got, we got the greater part of Southern California covered here. We got LA to San Bernardino and Orange County. So this is going to be super dope. Super dope. Hey, Will, I'm going to, I'm going to start off with you, my brother and, and everybody that's on this call, feel free to put some follow-up questions, anything you want to ask these individuals in the chat, and we'll definitely get to, get to you throughout the course of this conversation. But Will, 
Hey, brother, um, I know that you have a, a strong background in marketing. You actually have a degree in it, uh, correct? Yep. Awesome. So why don't you share with, uh, with us a little bit about the tools and, and technology that you use uh, that streamlines kind of like your workflow and, and what's enhanced your productivity as an agent? Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I think the backbone of your business is going to be your CRM. What CRM are you, are you using, right? When I when I hit Icon, I was using Follow Up Boss. Uh, Follow Up Boss is amazing if you use it correctly. There's a, I love the. There's a deal like a pipeline, um, and it basically, I, 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 you have to know what's coming, right? So as a as a real estate agent, you have to organize your business so that there's money now, but then there's money in the future, right? So there's deals now, there's deals in the future. You have to keep your eye on all those balls at one time. So definitely um, the CRM is going to be the major thing. The other thing is, again, I'm a marketer. So I'm really big into funnels and follow-up systems and campaigns and stuff like that. So I built my business off the back of Facebook and Instagram. So uh, Facebook ads and um, uh, creating funnels that get buyers in and just nurturing those guys. So having the systems like that is so important because you constantly have to be bringing in business, especially if you want to close as many transactions as you need to close to hit icon. So those are just a couple of the systems. So again, I'll, I'll, I'll recap. So just a great CRM and then a great system to bring in leads. And for me, that was Facebook and Instagram. Awesome, brother. Awesome. Yeah, clearly it's uh, it's shown in your production. Um, Liliana, is, is there a specific technology or or tool or CRM that that you've used that has has also contributed to to your growth? Yeah. So currently I use Follow Boss and Y Lopo um, that have been extremely helpful, just organizing my business, making sure that everything is filtered correctly um, and thinking three steps ahead. I think you know, a lot of agents, they get stuck in the now, right? Like, who am I going to close now? Who's my agent now? But my mindset is, okay, I got the now. Who am I going to close September, October, November? Like, those are my goals. And setting them them clients to the side and having them in my foresight, I mean, my in, in my peripheral so that I know where my where my payments are coming from for those months. Um, but I've actually been collaborating with Will um, and developing a new CRM together with him. So, um, I'm excited to see what what this thing does. I mean, he's the marketing genius, so um, so I'm I'm super excited to to create funnels and just be there. Um, I also run ads. I run a ton of ads um, through Instagram and Facebook as well. Um, I'm not as as astute with it, um, but I I definitely have used social media to my advantage. Um, I'm definitely always posting on there. I get a lot of clients from there. Um, and I, I, I'm always, always trying to put it out there. So if you're trying to be ABC, always be closing, um, you want to be able to constantly advertise yourself because you are a walking brand. So, um, continuously just exposing yourself to the public is going to be key. Well, that's what's up. That's what's up. Congratulations on your successes as well. Um, Chris, uh, I know that you and your team are crushing it out there in OC, uh, give us, give us a look at the back door, man. Like what, what are you guys using over there that that's helping the agents put, uh, put a lot of transactions down range? You know, we're, we're doing a lot of the similar stuff as, as our colleagues here. Uh, we are using follow boss as well. Uh, we obviously have it tied in with Y Lopo. That's our lead generation platform. Um, but I'm a little old school. I mean, I, I have my note ad. I write notes. I scribble. Um, I, I like going back to the basics as well. I think people still like that face-to-face -face interaction, whether it's door knocking, uh, passing out flyers, open houses, things like that. So um, I try to push my team to not only focus on the CRM and keep moving that lead along on the deal section, along with Facebook ads, Instagram ads, and any other resources that we're using, I still feel door knocking and, and farming and all those fun things are still part of it. We do have a lot of people that cold call in this office. Uh, I do have some agents that are cold calling about 15 to 2,000 uh, leads a month, uh, and they're just crushing it. I mean, they're 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 booking about 10 appointments a month. Um, so I, I think you have to mix a little bit of everything, to be honest with you. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So and that really ties in into 
um, like the components, like all three of you are icon agents, right? And so uh, whether you're running a team or an individual agent, like let's go round table really quick. Tell us about what does that look for you, in, you know, behind the scenes? Do you have an assistant? Are you running VAs? Uh, Will, what is, what is your, uh, your icon composition look like? Yeah, so I think my business is a little different from everyone else's. Um, I built mine where the business just comes to me. So um, uh, I have I have a TC, but the only VA I have, I have a video editor. So I have a full-time video editor. So he's pushing out video um, for my YouTube channel. And uh, that's I mean, that's basically how I, how I rock it. So pretty simple, pretty streamlined. I've never had a lot of overhead. Um, I don't buy leads. You know, I mean, I buy, you know, I advertise. But I've never done any Zillow. I've never done any of that other stuff. I just kind of uh, put out video. So I use LinkedIn. I use uh, Instagram, um, and I use YouTube. And the business kind of comes to me. That's that's awesome, Lil Lily. Um, so for me, I have a full time admin. Um, basically, I've trained her to kind of do all of the administrative side of what I do on a day-to-day -day basis. So I don't write my own offers. I don't write my own counters. Um, you know, she helps with my CMAs, um, a lot of the communication that goes in and out to the client. She's she's boots on the ground with me so that I can just focus on just the conversation piece and just being on the road and going to listing appointments, which has been super helpful to, to me being able to um, sustain more clients. And then with that being said, I kind of restructured my business a little bit differently this year. I'm trying to create more of a referral based business. So, um, I, I'm loving on them a lot more. So, um, you know, for every, for every holiday, for every birthday, for every anniversary, they're receiving like a small gift, a gift card, a card, um, a phone call from me. Um, and then through the escrow process, we're now like, you know, rewarding them through every accolade. So we're giving them a gift card once they get their appraisal taken care of to like to yogurt land. Um, we're, we're bringing a little gift bag to inspection time. Um, you know, we're setting a pizza for moving day just to create like a really good experience. So, and create that wow factor so that when the age, when they're done, they got, they got all good things to say about the experience of working with me and my team so that they go tell their families and friends and refer more business this way. So um, that's kind of what I've been focusing on with my business to help, you know, create a more referral based business instead of having to buy leads. Super dope, super dope. And, and Chris? Uh, you know, I'm fortunate enough to have a gentleman by the name of Matt here in my office. He's a partner of mine here, uh, which deals with uploading and kind of leads Facebook ads, all that part of it, all the techie side of it. Uh, we have a running joke. I call him a geek squad. Um, but he is a genius with the, our leads. And that's the reason why we're converting leads. We started converting leads within 30 days of acquiring the leads. Uh, we do have about six, seven different vendors that we're uh, acquiring leads from. Um, Lately, uh, the past two weeks, I started working on building my own call center uh, in Belize. Uh, so that's probably about three weeks out. Uh, so we'll be having, you know, we'll have about three ISAs and a manager in Belize. And hopefully that'll create a little bit more leads and a little bit more deals for the office. How can we piggyback off that, Christian? Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> call center, please. There's going to be, be a cost to it, I'm sure. Off the Zoom, we'll talk. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, so so one thing that like is going to be consistent in this conversation with these icons is these individuals know how to pivot, guys. They they know how to to you know evolve in changing markets. And so it's it's a perfect segue because one resonating theme that I've heard from agents all year is there's less sales, less opportunities, and it's all this negative banter, right? So share with us your experiences. Like, how have you been able to handle things like competitive bid, uh, bidding for your clients or just the, like the shifting economic conditions that are occurring for you to be able to maintain, if not increase your sales throughout this year? Uh, let's start off with Will. Yeah, so so how I shifted th this year again. I mean, my my goals are a little different, so I'm building more of an organization. So I came into the year already knowing that I wasn't going to be focused on more sales, so I focused on higher volume sales. So this year I shifted, and my average sales price is over a million. 
um, this year versus last year, um, it was around the six to seven hundred thousand dollar range. Now I'm just selling. Uh, my goal was this year to sell one house over a million. And if you know anything about you know million dollar buyers, it's a it's a different buyer. So at that price point, they already have a ton of cash to bring to the table. A lot of times they're not worrying about uh, interest rates. A lot of my clients are uh, business owners. Um, so uh, the things that affect the normal buyer is not really affecting them. So it's just, it, 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 that's how I shifted and that's how my business has still run. So um, I haven't done as many transactions, but I haven't had to this year because with my average sale price being over a million, um, it's just been a game changer for me. Yeah, great answer, man. Way to, way to shift there. Yeah. Liliana? What about you, my friend? What uh, what what are you guys doing for competitive bidding? Like, how are you guys keeping these, you know, opportunities flowing for your buyers and sellers? Yeah, for sure. I'm constantly educating myself on like what's going on in the market. You know, I got to be able to be the sharpest tool in the toolbox. So making sure that I'm staying up to date, up to date on what's shifting. Like my lender, anytime you know rates increase or decrease, um, we make that a conversation piece so that I can coach and educate my clients but ultimately for me it's you know because I play both sides I'll I'll pick apart other people's offers and, and pick up tools and and um and things that they're doing within their offers and then add them to to my tricks for future offers when 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 I'm when I'm representing a buyer so I think ultimately education, I mean, I think really just showing up to the things like this um, and, and just learning from the people that are already doing it and making sure that you are constantly like training and educating yourself throughout the way um, is going to be is going to be essential to your growth and to be remaining the sharpest tool in the toolbox. Um, I, mean, I got some innovative ways to just be super skillful with my RPA that I just be whipping things out and uh, not, your, not your average agent can't do those type of things. So, um, mm -hmm. you know, not to toot my own horn, but it's come with, it's come with experience skills and just, and just constantly educating myself. I love that piece. And we're going to circle back to that. Um, Christian. You know, uh, I think she's right. The education is big, but I think, um, the shifting market, I, I think it's more educating the client than, than not only ourselves, yeah. um, you know, maybe an example of, Oh, we're rates are so high. So we, get a $20,000 credit for a buy down. In my opinion, I think that's a bad idea. I, I think you use it for closing costs, nine months to 12 months from now, rates go down, you refile at that point, And now you save that 20K that you're gonna buy down for nine months. So uh, I just think little things like that, educating your client, whether it's a buyer or a seller, uh, I think will allow you to shift in this market. And I just, maybe thinking a little bit outside the box uh, will help that a little bit as well. Yeah, and I agree with Christian, you know, educating myself so I can educate my clients, you know? <laughs> there you go. Yeah, I think that's that's extremely important. Um, and again, let's like I to shift the conversation really quick. Um, a little bit about you guys, because again, like you know, for us, for us as agents, and we're seeing individuals such as yourselves hitting these high marks in terms of production and uh professional growth, there's obviously something um, in the baseline of your character and your personal growth that's enabling you to, to free up these lanes, right? So um, Christian, why don't we start off with you, brother? Tell us a little bit about, you know, a little bit about education, but more importantly, like your personal professional development, how does it play into your success as an icon agent? Professional development. Um, you know, I, I started about 14 years ago and I started with doing loan modifications. So I've done all the way from loan modifications to uh, short sales, to flipping homes, to retail, to door knocking. Uh, I just feel like that knowledge, you know, from door knocking and sitting on a, at a table with a grown man crying in front of me to try to save their home has prepared me to, to deal with any kind of market, any kind of shifting as, as we called it. Right. So, um, Obviously, treating people with respect, looking out for what you know their best interest, obviously keeps the referrals coming. Uh, that's always number one. Um, I just feel like my knowledge from the flipping side of it, the short sale side of it, the loan mods uh, has prepared me to deal with with what I'm dealing with today with this market. So um, yeah. I think you know age and and experience will get you prepared. I think I'm probably the oldest one on this panel. Uh, 
but yeah, I, I would, you know, I just been fortunate to deal with that stuff and that's preparing. Yeah, I love that, bro, because that's a skill set that a lot of people don't talk about, right? So just the interpersonal skills of, um, of communicating effectively with other human beings and and meeting them where they're at uh, develops that kind of mem- you know an experience that they'll remember and keep you top of mind when uh, when business uh, comes to the table. So right. yeah, phenomenal. Uh, Liliana, tell us about, about your uh, professional or personal you know development. Like, is there something that you've been instituting or recently have that you're noticing that's contributing to your professional growth? Yeah. So um, this year I'm I'm highly committed to self-developing. So I hired a a coach that I meet with on a weekly basis where we kind of run through my business and and, and fill the gaps on where where, where things are missing. Um, I just finished Landmark, which is if you haven't done Landmark, I would highly recommend you do it. Um, You know, I I go to all the EXP events. I I definitely surround myself with, with big people and just try to be within that synergy so that I can think bigger myself and continuously not be the smartest girl in the room. Room, you know, I never want to be that person. I, I'm constantly just trying to um, do those kind of things. And with that, with, through my experiences, so little fun fact about me, um, you know, I, uh, I was an educator for five years. And then ultimately with that, um, I've, I've learned that I'm going to be a student to the game forever, no matter what I do, no matter what I'm passionate about. I'm going to continuously keep that that wheel turning. Um, so I bought my first home when I was 24 years old as a short sale property. Um, it was the scariest thing I ever did. And then I bought my first home before my parents even owned a home. So um, that was that was a game changer for me. I grew up in a Section 8 apartment. Once I learned the game, I was able to help my parents buy their house. So I moved them out of the hood and got them into a nice rancher house. Um, then I helped my friends and family buy houses. And I really fell in love with that. Um, I actually bought a home at an auction and flipped it. I've already flipped two homes. I have an air, I've had Airbnbs. So I'm in the game. So I do a lot of investments. Um, I do short-term rentals. I know all of it. So when I, and I always treat my clients as if they were family. Like I don't, I'm not one of those shady realtors that'll purposely leave things out. Like I will, I will address it front, front end, even if it might kill the deal, you know, cause I never want to be that realtor that is just in it for the wrong reasons or closing deals that I can't that my conscious can't sleep with at night. So, um, so yeah, just being transparent, vulnerable, coming with conviction and experience. Um, and I think that has definitely been super helpful because people feel it, right. They feel the genuine, the genuineness and your advice that you give them. hundred percent, hundred percent. And and like, just speaking on those events, there's been few, if any events that I've gone to that you haven't been at, um, and so for all you agents that say that you can't run a successful business, that you can't plug in, that you can't be at events, that you can't be on four to five Zooms every single week, you're dead wrong. Yeah. Uh, Liliana is uh, the epitome of being able to take all that and create a, a balance that enables her business to grow. So congratulations. Thank you. I appreciate that. 100%. Uh, Mr. Will Higgins. Yeah, so I, I don't. Mine's isn't that difficult. It's real simple. I'm a connector. I'm a collaborator. And I'm a guy that asks a lot of questions. That's that's it. And and I'm all in. I'm literally all in. Uh, Day one, I have the the power to pivot. So as soon as I'm here, I'm here. Like I'm here, I'm in. I'm I'm at, again, I'm at every event. I'm on every podcast. I'm on, I'm on everything. So uh, look for me guys at, at any and every event. And it's always been that way because I'm just here checking boxes. So I'm just checking boxes and I'm showing up. Yeah, I can, I can definitely secondhand that, uh, that testament from, uh, from Will. This, this man is all in from day one. Uh, what he verbally committed to has been actionable to a T and it's and it's uh it's paying forward in your business, my bro. So I'm super proud of you. Um, and, can, I, and- can I add something to yes, um and uh like for all you guys that are on here, I think most of you guys are probably uh, with the company. But um, if you just go all in and you sell two to three homes a year, you'll look back and and it'll be amazing at you know what you what you can build here. So I'll just I'll just leave it there. But all of us have the same opportunity to build something amazing and you can change you and your family's lives just by doing the things that we agreed to do when we agreed to be a real estate agent. Mm-hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Let's add a layer to that, bro. So, so like share some insight, Will, and, and I'll ask Christian and Liliana the same question. Um, and, and do you mind if I share your, your personal experience of when you came to EXP, right? Yeah. So, and, and cause you've said it publicly when this man came to EXP, uh, he was doing some real hype things over at Keller Williams. And he was that guy that was, that was getting beat up behind the scenes uh, with a little bit of trash talk when he made the move. Um, but what I loved about when you did it, bro, not only did you did it with a lot of integrity and professionally, uh, you still were able to maintain um, a lot of your relationships throughout the industry and your reputation preceded you. And that has enabled you to, you know, now build what's coming up on a 200 you know, person organization in this company. So how do us as agents continue to, to operate in that manner with integrity, with, uh, with industry connections to enhance our business? Yeah. So from a, from a real estate perspective, again, it's, it's being the best realtor for you and, and your clients, right? So all of us have a different client profile and all of us, you know, our clients have different needs. So um, be the person that they need you to be, right? So check that box first. We all need to, to sell homes, right? But then also it's, it's thinking bigger. Um, and me, I, like we all got into real estate to make money, right? Like, and that's the only thing I hate about being realtors. Like we're not supposed to make it about ourselves. Well, you got into this business to make money for you and your family. And it's just like when you're on a plane, right? They say when the plane's going down, the first person you need to put the mask on is yourself. So you you definitely need to, to help yourself. And that's looking in totality at what the company has to offer. And again, that's what I saw when I came here. I looked at in totality what the company had to offer. And I'm not a, a, a and or type of guy. I'm an and and type of guy. So I went all in on everything. Mm. Mm. Yeah, that's deep, bro. Um, Liliana, what what about you? You, 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 uh, your professional network and attending events, like it all seems to come together for you easily. Is Is that just because of, the amazing human being that you are, or do you have to put some effort into developing these kind of connections? No, I mean, I just remain my true authentic self. Like I'm just, I'm just who I am and people that are going to love you are going to love you. And the people that, you know, you don't necessarily, you know, align with or vibe with, then those aren't your people. It's okay. There's 8 billion people in the world. Um, as long as you're true to who you are and you, 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 and I, and I, I address people with a sense of appreciation, right? Like for people to take time and just talk to me and, or, you know, engage in conversation and just be present in my life. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm grateful for all of the, those individuals, right? I'm, I'm definitely one person that wears my heart on my sleeve and I don't mind just taking into account and allowing people to feel that, you know, some people, so, I mean, the world is a cold place and I feel like people just forget those small little gestures that just go a long way. So, um, I think for me, it's just been just being authentically me and just coming from a place of service and or genuine appreciation, has allowed me to just build awesome connections and um, just continuously like have an influence and or receive help from people that I need it from. So, um, so I yeah. think it's a Virgo thing. I think it's a Virgo thing. Yes, come on, Virgos. <laughs> All right, not not the Virgos. Okay, no. <laughs> uh, Christian, don't tell me you're a Virgo, brother. Are you? No, man. No, 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 no. I am a Capricorn. Yeah, um, Team Cap. Let's go, that's baby. That's right. That's right. So, uh, and I have a little bit, I mean, my answer is gonna be a little bit shorter, but a little bit similar to Will. When I switched over to EXP, I got a lot of heat from where I came from. I won't say any names, um, but it's funny how keeping, you know, being true to yourself, how things come back around and those same people that were saying certain things now are asking questions a year and a half later and wanting to know more. So it just goes back to being yourself, uh, treating people with respect. Uh, some people are going to like it. Some people don't like it. And I know people don't like changes. Uh, they'll say what they have to say, but they do end up coming around uh, as they notice, you know, your, your, you know, I guess your true colors per se. Right. So uh, I did go through the same thing as Will, but I just be myself and I just put my head down and work and hopefully people realize that, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so let's, let's, uh, let's talk real quick about social media. All right. So 
obviously it's a, a tool that's required in the toolbox nowadays in order to sustain like credibility, professionalism, um, gain activity. Uh, Will, share with us a little bit about what your strategy has been like um, with uh, videos and how are you able to create like, like your branding's on point, bro, first of all. Um, and I know that's contributing to your bro, business. What is the average, what do us as the average agents, what do we need to do to get on that level or start working toward it? Yeah. So again, another Virgo thing. And I know uh, Liliana, so we <laughs> talk a lot. So we share this. Um, I obsess over, I obsess over things um, until I get them. But I'll tell a quick story on, on kind of why, right? Because there's always a, a why. Um, when I started real estate, I only had 250 like followers on, um, on Instagram. And um, there was a situation where I had two listings and um, one was going to be a buy. So three transactions. And those were the only deals I had, right? Like who, who can, who can relate? You got three deals. You're going to work the hell out of those damn deals. Right. So I worked, I was working the hell out of those deals. Well, something happened and all three of those deals fell apart and I had nothing. And I, I'm a hundred percent ownership kind of guy, right? Literally everything is my fault. So that, that was my fault. And I, I vowed never to put my family um, or myself in that position again. So I needed to grow my business. I need to figure out a way to have business coming to me. And, um, and this was 2018, 2019. Nobody was really using Facebook and Instagram to its fullest. So I said, let me go and get busy. I went on a, there was a program then it was called Skillshare or something like that. I went on every program and I learned about Instagram. I was editing my own videos. Like I literally obsessed and I learned these things um, and my business, um, you know, branding, everything. Uh, and, uh, you know, I started implementing all that stuff and my business took off from there, literally from there. Um, and I've closed uh, uh, over $26 million in, in real estate just from my gym using my Instagram strategy. So that's kind of how it all started. Um, but now I'm just following the trends, right? So I'm, I'm, I'm spotting trends and I'm spotting trends outside of real estate. So so don't, don't, don't get caught following too many realtors, guys. So I look outside of the industry for um, trends that are coming up because real estate's kind of the last to get some of this stuff. So um, that's what I would tell you guys. Look, look in un other industries um, for nuggets and for what they're doing on social and then bring that to real estate and it'll be fresh and catch you some eyeballs. Yeah, that's a gem right there, guys. That's a gem. Um, take a look at what other industries are doing because uh, what that's going to enable you to do, right, Will, is you're going to stand out from the crowd, yep. right? You're going to stand out from the crowd and uh, and create some some momentum behind it. Liliana, I know your your, your social media is on point as well. Um, how, how have you been able to leverage um, Instagram and Reels and all that to create more business? Your Your property videos, by the way, are just next level, so... Thank you. Um, so honestly speaking, when I first started this business, um, I didn't I didn't see the power behind social media. Right. Like I was very like minuscule on there. I wasn't really investing in my social media. Um, I wasn't paying for videos. I wasn't doing any of that. Um, but clients are going to look you up. <laughs> They're going to look you up. You are asking them for their the most precious investment that they have. And you're asking them to trust you with that. And they're going to Google you. And if you don't think that you're, you're in denial. Um, so I've been super intentional about Mark making my um, Instagram look like my resume. Right. So um, what am I doing? What am I about? Um, what type of things am I pushing out? Um, and I use them in my listing presentations now, too, you know, so um, as a as a part of my marketing strategy and, and a part of me being able to um, showcase your property, I'm going to push it, push it on to my social media, you're going to get a lot more views. Um, and I have these many agents that follow me in addition to a lot of clients that are in this area and all of my clients that are buyers. Um, and, and I, and I push that out as part of my marketing piece for listings as and now also in my CRM, I'm also sending out my link tree with all of my social medias. I'm being very vulnerable and open and honest about, Hey, come follow me. Like, I want you to follow my journey. I want to earn your trust. You might not be ready right now, but, um, 
ultimately down the line when you are as long as you're following me I want to be your go-to realtor so um in the beginning I was keeping them both separate like I was like oh I don't want my clients to follow me like I'm trying to like be quiet over here it was kind of weird and then I thought to myself like what am I doing like <laughs> I want them to follow me like I want them to see my stuff you know so um now I'm like big bold faith like if I'm working with a lead that um, I, I may not, I just met or it's a lead gen lead, like, Hey, let's be friends on socials. Are you on there? Let's follow each other. You know, I'm really intentional about that. Um, so that, you know, even if they're like a nurturer that turns into a nurture, um, when they do pick up, they see how busy I am. They see that I'm really boots on the ground doing this 24 seven for them. So big piece, big piece. Christian, uh, what about, what about your guys? So do you guys have a social media strategy for the team or have you noticed your team members elevating with social well, media? I'm going to speak for myself, the old guy in the panel. And I am going to say I'm definitely the worst one out of the panel on my social media side of it. And that's something that we literally, literally started working on in the past two weeks. Actually, instead of call nights on Wednesday nights, we actually have social media night. Um, so we are, you know, we've written about, I don't know, 50, 60 scripts. Uh, we finally have uh, uh, somebody that's going to edit our videos because I am not techie like that, like Mr. Will. So, uh, it's a start for us. That's something that I do need to improve on. Uh, I know that can generate a little bit more, uh, maybe more opportunities for myself and for the team. I do have some amazing agents in here that have a huge following, uh, 50,000 people or so. Um, and they're not tapping into it as much either. So we are making it a point to make sure we add that to our armor, I guess, and, 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 and try to get some deals out of that as well. So uh, we are trying to put ourselves out there a little bit more. Um, I'm not very good at it, but I will be working on that. That's my goal. Well, I, I love that about you, my brother, is that you're that's a, that you're a leader, right? So you notice that that's maybe a, a weakness in your arsenal, but yep. but you're you're setting the stage to make adjustments and pivots, and uh, and you're addressing it with your with your team. So definitely, it's a strong strong uh, skill set. Um, and and all of you have built large our teams and organizations here, so so Christian, um, what's what's the importance of of building a strong team and 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 how do you like attract and retain like the best talent that's there with you? Oof, that's a hard one. Uh, we have a very favorable uh, comp structure. Uh, I think that definitely helps me out to attract some good agents. Uh, we won't get into the details of those. Um, you know, I'm, I've, I've actually put them in front of myself and I, I think they realize that. Um, they literally book me uh, for about 20 appointments a week. I do go to listing appointments with everybody to make sure the office gets it. We wanna be a high producing listing office. Uh, we don't wanna focus so much on Zillow per se or, or uh, realtor.com or so forth we want to be able to get as many listings that we can we technically uh not technically we actually have about 18 or 19 active or coming soon listings which is crazy uh, to have that many at this in this kind of market um but I, I i make sure that i'm there for them i think they realize that uh we did do an, an awesome event that uh, mr robles was there with us as well uh, so we try to do things outside of the office. We did take the team to uh, Del Mar Racetrack. Um, but, you know, you, you got to keep it fresh. You got to make sure you're educating them. You got to be there for them. This morning at 10 a.m., we had about 17 agents show up mm. to a fixer. Um, a lot of these agents don't know how much windows cost, flooring costs, kitchens cost, so forth and so forth. So we will be doing that a little bit more often. So when they are showing a property, they can uh, maybe pivot from what it would cost for a kitchen or a load bearing wall or, you know, that kind of stuff. So uh, we're just trying to think outside the box and just keep putting a little bit more ammo into these agents. And that, that's what I'm trying to do. That's awesome, brother. Yeah. Boots on the ground, hands on. Yeah. 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 OJT. I don't know. Youngsters, <laughs> youngsters probably don't even know that acronym but uh <laughs> but uh at any rate liliana um you've also i've noticed your leadership from afar um like all your videos got the whole squad in them and you make every it just seems like you're moving like a unit um so how how have you how have you been able to attract like 
people that are running in alignment with you? Um, yeah, just come from a place of value. I think that's, that's super important, you know, um, and then ultimately be there for them. I think, uh, in this industry, especially within other brokerages, cause I came from another brokerage, um, every, real estate agents, is, they, they're more for themselves, right? They stay more independent. They're not willing to share. They're not willing to, to really bring people on or give advice. I remember just being this, this small little tadpole in this really big pond and nobody would tell me anything and everyone was just so closed off and nobody would share their secrets as much as I asked. They just wouldn't. Um, but this environment is completely different. And um, I, I just love the collaborative effort that it takes. So I'm willing to collaborate with my clients. I'm an open book. You know, I'm willing to share all my secrets. Like there's abundance, there's enough business to go around. Um, I don't, I don't live in scarcity. So, um, you know, ultimately, and the greatest part about EXP is their win is my win. So it, it, it incentivizes it a little bit, which is nice. It's the icing on the cake. Um, but ultimately, my mindset it's just, you know, I want to see people win, right? Like, I don't want anyone to feel how I felt when I joined this company, when I joined real estate. Um, and I ultimately um, approach every situation um, as if it were me, how would I want to receive or how would I want to be helped? So that's kind of like the mindset that I've developed with all of this. That's dope. Yeah, I'm going to coin, I'm going to put that on a shirt, you know, <laughs> their win is my win. So yes, <laughs> you haven't copyrighted that, yet, right? No, I haven't yet, but at this point, you guys, you guys heard it. You guys heard it here. Big Will, um, I've actually been on the basketball court with you, bro. So I know, (laughs) I know you're a triple threat. Uh, Tell us, man. And just for context, how how long have you been here and how many agents are in your org? Yeah, so I've been here um, just over two years and uh, we're getting ready to hit 200 agents um, in my group. And, and honestly, like the, the EXP model allows you to cheat, right? And what do we say, Joe? If you ain't cheating, you ain't trying, right? So um, this model allows me to um, align with the best because as a team leader, essentially, uh, I'm going to tell you guys a secret and, and all, all of you can attest to it. Nobody wants to be on your team. Ultimately, nobody wants to be on your team. They want to be you. They want to be on your team to, to get something out of it, right? Um, and when they get what they want and need, then they go off on their on their own. So this um, this model actually allows me to cheat and align with the best real estate agents because the best real estate agents wouldn't be on my team, but in this model they can be in my organization in my group. So um, so that's what I focus on. Right? I focus on just partnering with the best because the 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 more great agents we bring on, the stronger we become because that's just another person to collaborate with. So it's, it's like we're making, I'm from New Orleans, so we're making this, this roux, right? So uh, we're, we're making this gumbo and every agent just adds to the pot, adds to the pot, makes it, makes it richer. Yeah, and, and now, I, I mean, I'm sure many of us, especially at EXP are noticing, now that's opening opportunities for you, right? I mean, the last few EXP, events you've been asked to present and speak and so that's a that's a tribute to uh to your leadership brother so thank you for that appreciate it brother 100 percent, 100 percent. liliana question for you let's talk let's 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 have a quick chat about um about production right so um what is something unique about your business that has increased your production Like, what is something unique? Is it an app? Is it a person? Is it something behind the scenes? Like, give us something below the surface. Yeah. So for listing presentations, I have like a custom book that I bring. Um, It's actually here. Hold on. I'm going to show it to you guys. So this beautiful book (laughs) uh, that I bring, it's custom. And then I put in the the pages that I want to include. And it binds together right before I go into the listing presentation. Um, and it has all of, and it's custom to them. So has their name, has the address, has the comps, has my process, everything that goes in there. Um, and, and, and honestly, it's, it's a, it's a game changer. Um, in addition to that, I have a process I do, I do a pre-listing presentation that I, I'll either email or mail to them. Um, I'll send them a elongated email to them. I'll send them all of my socials in advance. 
Um, and then when I show up with that book that's custom with their name, that's the wow factor. They're like, you got time to put this shit together, like, you know, so um, that helps tremendously with with just winning the listing because nine times out of 10, um, the, the, most agents don't show up with that. They all show up with the CMA report directly from the MLS, just with the comps, and maybe a little bit about them, and that's it. Um, I actually lost a listing one time because I didn't have that book. Um, I called the, I, and I like to call the if I if I go to a listing appointment and I don't get the listing, I will call the seller and say, hey, you know, I'm always trying to better my business um, and I want to know where I dropped the ball. You know, what what did this agent have that I didn't have? Um, and the one lady told me one time she was like, she they made me a custom book and I never never had a custom book made for me before. And I was like, say less. I'm going to go buy me some custom books <laughs> because um, it's just not worth losing a listing. So I went and I, I mean, they're a little pricey, but um, it definitely has helped tremendously when I pull up to listing appointments. So, yeah, market separators. Huge, yeah. huge. Christian, what, what about you, sir? Um, I use a similar book to Lily does. Um, I like to drop my book prior to re, uh, arriving to the listing appointment. Um, and I literally, well, I, my team will vouch for, I do walk in with a notepad and I scribble. I don't write anything down. They think I'm writing stuff down. Um, I just know that most agents that walk into listing appointments uh, will walk in with their iPads and talk about how good their social media is and look at my postcards and yada, yada. I try to do completely opposite of that. Uh, so that's helped me out a lot. Um, if there are any three to five agents, I will be the only one that doesn't do the same thing. So hopefully they remember me. Um, the other advice I would give, and I think this is a big one, is uh, finding a niche. You know, I think we all have niches, right? Will's great at marketing. Lily's professional book there that she has is awesome. Um, uh, I've had the, the, you know, the luck of learning uh, about flipping. My father's a GC, he's a general contractor. Um, so I try to partner up with investors where I can find them the properties. I get paid on the front end and I get to relist it and I get paid on the back end. Um, I also project manage it for them and get paid as well for that. So that gives me about eight to 10 listings a year. So that might not be your niche and that's okay, but you got to find your niche. Some people are great at open houses, but you have to find a niche. I think that will help you increase your business, achieve an icon award, uh, but you have to have a niche. Golden, bro. Golden, yeah. golden. Um, Christian and Liliana, um, Cynthia Ibarra wanted to know where where do where do you create those custom books? Um, I believe the company is called Pelaman. Pelaman.com. Pelaman. Um, they're in Georgia. I think they're in Atlanta, Georgia. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Awesome stuff. Uh, it's actually Pel. Uh, I don't know if it's. I think it's Pel. P e l l m a n. Drop it in the um in the Drop chat. Will, what about you, brother? You know, again, like all that stuff is great, and I, I think I should implement some of it. But you know, I like I said, I've, I've been kind of fortunate enough to 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 build up a um a, a social media following. Um, and a lot everything I get is typically a referral. Um, so I've implemented um, events and um, I've implemented events into, into my business. So I really just focus on my past clients. So um, I use client giants. So my top clients, they, they're getting a quarterly gift. Um, they get birthdays, they get um, uh, home anniversaries and it's called client giant. It basically does it for you. So I, I never forget. So I set all my past and top, cli uh, top clients on that. And then I'm having quarterly events. So my last event was I rented out a movie theater for my clients. So I'm just constantly doing stuff like that and just loving on my past clients and then just adding in the the, the referrals or the new clients I get. So, um, and with that being said, I don't need to do any of those things because by the time they come to me, they're, they're already sold. Like there's no additional selling that needs to happen. Yeah, yeah. I've seen that in action. I random story I, I showed up at the alley county fair one day randomly and ran into will and he was having a uh, a client appreciation at the alley county fair and was... <laughs> how many people with you <laughs> we had a whole gang out there so good stuff good stuff hey guys so we, we got a couple minutes uh let's be purposeful about it. i want to get two more questions in okay um liliana um what bit of advice would you give to the agents that are on this call or that will listen to this that 
are looking to become icon agents, but they're like stuck between the five to 10 or 15 deal range. Like what, what's something that they can do now that's going to push them over the top? Um, definitely be willing to invest in your business, right? Like, how do you expect people to invest in you when you're not willing to invest in yourself? So um, if you need to bridge that gap, invest a little, buy some online leads, run ads, um, definitely amp your game, amp your marketing, um, clean up your look a bit, um, maybe invest in your Peloman books. <laughs> I think all of that matters, right? Like, um, and if you truly are committed, if you're truly hitting the ground and working your leads and working um, your marketing, and things like that, um, there's no reason why you can't convert, right? Also, show up to script practice, be confident in your delivery, um, know what you're talking about, know your product, know the ins and outs of your products. And if you're not sure and you're not confident, go get, go get some education on it, right? I think the, the beauty of EXP is that we have 40 to 80 classes a week just in the world. So they're teaching you literally about everything. And then within our organization, we have like an additional 20 to 30 a week. So there, if you're if you're not sure what you're talking about, go get educated invest in your business um, and follow up. Like follow up is the key factor and figure out a way to stand out in a, in, a, in a sense, you know, use your personality, figure out who you're talking to in the across the room and figure out a way to connect with them. Be moldable, be a chameleon and work harder than anyone else. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Christian, what advice would you give them? I think, I think you need to have three pillars. You know, I think most people are just, uh, they want to be a buyer's agent, listing agent or uh, door knock person, you know, like agent. So I think you need to have three pillars. You know, um, some people are great at cold calling. Great. You're good at that. Add open houses, add uh, door knocking. Um, so you have to have three pillars. You got to figure out where your three pillars are and you have to follow that. Once you get good at one of them, you master it, add a, add a fourth one. But you have to have three pillars in order to achieve these kind of goals. It's not easy to get 25 to 35 transactions and icon every time. Um, so you're going to have to invest in some leads. You're going to have to cold call. You're going to have to door knock. You're going to have to work open houses. Yep. So three pillars. Arsenal of, uh, sources, right? You got to have yep. an arsenal of sources. Um, big will talk to us. Yeah, I think, I think it goes deeper than that guys. I think, um, uh, again, I'm, I'm a big, I'm big on questions and, and foundation, right? I think success, uh, Jade, some of you guys, when I say that is, uh, you see Christian, you see Liliana, you see Will, you see Joseph, you're looking at the successful version. You need to go back and ask questions about what they did when they first started, right? So you didn't see Will on a team um, doing script practice every morning at 9 a.m., cold calling, circle prospecting. You didn't see that Will, right? Open houses every weekend. All, you see the Will now. So I think when people ask questions, they need to ask better questions and look in the past because we all developed a strong foundation, which allows us to do what we do now. Yeah, great answer. Great answer. Um, let's close this out, team, by uh, really quick, tell everybody how they can get in contact with you, how they can get in flow with you, and um, share with us uh, what does your business look like in the next three years from now? Will. Well, I'm at, uh, I'm Will Higgins and I'm on the leadership track guys. So, um, you know, uh, you won't see me selling houses, uh, in, <laughs> in three years. Um, but you'll see me, um, but yeah, I'm, I'm leadership coaching training. I want to build up the next generation of leaders. So, um, that's where you find me. You'll, you'll, you'll see me. Love that. Liliana. Same. So I'm at icon Liliana Matos um, on Instagram. Still, I stole it from Joseph, you know, <laughs> trendsetter over there. Um, and uh, in three years, uh, you know, I have aspirations of leadership as well. I want to continue to grow my organization, continue to partner with a lot of amazing um, connectable agents that are looking to build together and share. Um and yeah, possibly explore coaching as one of my routes as well. So um, I definitely want to want to want to go in that direction. Coach Matos, I love it. Let's go. Yeah. Icon Christian, did you change your handle too, bro, or not yet? Not yet. Not yet. Oh, end of the day, EOD. <laughs> Come on. I think it's at at Christian EXP. Pretty simple. Um, let's see. In the next three years, I you know what I would. I've done coaching all my life. I used to be a, a soccer player. Then I became a coach of a couple of little kids teams. And then I ran an organization. So I guess I'm still doing the same thing. 
at a different level. So uh, I would love to get to where my friend Robles is at and yourself and Will, you know, and try to hit that 100 plus uh, group. Uh, so I would like to focus a little bit more on uh, developing my group and, and increasing that. Um, I've loved coaching my whole life. Uh, it's very interesting. I was thinking the same thing as Lily as well. Eventually being a coach of, of uh, it, it, just in some way, whether it's it's uh, a one-on-one -on -one coaching or maybe coaching on certain topics, uh, how to flip, how to find flips, things like that. Uh, but those are, those are a couple of things that I, I hope I can achieve in the next two years. Wow. Wow. That's uh, phenomenal. And um, I know we're at the top of the hour, so I want to thank the panelists for being on this call. I'm humbly thankful for being able to moderate and just to be in the room in the conversation with, with you three. Big shout out to uh, my brother, Leo Robles, for having us on, on, uh, on this conversation. And thank you guys. You know that there was a lot of insightful conversations here, a lot for you guys to implement, connect with these amazing human beings. And yeah lfg leo robles take it away let's go hey hey i'm gonna do something really quick because i i actually was uh experimenting here with the view let me see if this works right so just play with me for a minute oh it works i was trying to figure this out can you guys see it <laughs> it looks uh, like we're it looks like we're in an official panel <laughs> yeah okay i just wanted i just wanted to kind of like figure that out i was like i didn't want to do that when everybody else <laughs> when everybody else was like on this thing, I don't want to play around with it, but I just want to say thank you to every single one of you guys uh, uh, for your time, your attention. Um, this, this, I mean, I, I want to thank you know each one of the panelists. Thank you, Joseph. Thank you, Christian. Thank you, Lily. Thank you, Will. You guys brought a tremendous amount of value. Make sure you guys show these guys some love. I did drop in their Instagram handles here into the chat. Make sure you guys follow them. I know there was a couple of you that asked some key questions. Um, you know, I would say just connect with them on IG. They're very collaborative and, you know, they can get back to you. And we're going to get them back into another conversation again, because I think this was extremely valuable. So once again, thank you guys for your time. Let's create an amazing day. Let's grow. Bye. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you, guys. Bye. Bye.